Okay, so we're going to start off with a thank you because I haven't done one for a long time. Thank you for all of you that found me again. Um, I know it, it's hard to start again. It's been hard for me. Um, time is is just running away with me and during the lockdown I had lots of time and we had the monthlies and the weeklies and what have you and I know you're missing out on content because I just haven't got time um, but I will try from August to bring back the monthlies at least um, I don't think we'll be doing an astral DJ we'll do one for everybody I think because I just can't do that either and I don't want to overpromise. Um, but I do want to thank you all for coming back. Um, it's been a struggle to get the numbers up. So if you haven't already um, liked, commented, um, subscribed, please do. Because I, I feel like the message isn't getting out here as much as it is everywhere else. Um so what we're going to do is, and it's a bit late because it was this morning, but it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do a wheel for um, the moon and Capricorn. Um, a new, full moon in Capricorn. So um, we'll start with a significator that will come out with at the end clarifying card um but thank you to you all i'm sorry i haven't been able to do my good mornings like i have done but just just so many things going on at the minute it's hard to keep up um and what else shall we do um do you know what i think we'll have we haven't had one for a while. If they're there, where are they? No, they're there. Okay, well, I don't know where they've gone. So we'll stick with um, an angel card, I think, for a change. I've done for a while. And we'll do the wheel. So this is a full moon in Capricorn. It was this morning about six o'clock GMT. So we're probably in Aquarius by now. And we'll use the universe cards to start with so i do appreciate your support you've all been with me a long time now and you're beautiful thank you always very supportive and i um i really don't do this for me i do do it for you so i'm glad that you're there
So first of all then, we've got an imbalance, an addiction. So we have life, the old way, doing things, the outcome of a situation. We've got Sagittarius energy. So anywhere in your chart, the current chart, um, or the energy of that. It's um, failed studies. Um, a failure to learn a lesson. Um, it's imbalanced, the name Iris, or the flowers Irises, the yellow Irises, um, the rainbow. It's addictions to a way of life, the old way of doing things, the outcome of the situation. It's being put through the blacksmith's forge. It could be that you're addicted to online shopping, anything, drugs, alcohol, whatever. Um, the number 14 is negative. So that could be a door number, it could be 14 degrees on the chart, it could be um, a birthday or a passing. In the next eight days there will be something out of the blue to astonish you and it will be positive. Um, an action is taken. There is possibly a divorced or widowed woman. Also this is the moon in Aquarius that we're in now, so well done spirit. Um, it's clear thinking. It's good advice from doctors, spiritual leaders um, and lawyers. It is nurses, um, it's surgeons. It's the woman in blue. Um, she takes the sword and severs ties. So it could be a divorced or widowed woman, like I said. Somebody who's guarding their heart. Because something's been done behind your back. Um, your attention was elsewhere and somebody took liberties they're either taking um, credit for what you've done or they're stealing and lying this could be within a marriage it could be problems with teachers schools the study again um, the name Simon and Peter is important keys lost any or all of those. Taurus, the throat, needs healing. It is someone who is um, binding themselves to the material rather than the spiritual side of this world. Catholic Church, um, the 5 and the 23, negative. And someone is feeling ungrateful or unworthy. If you're ungrateful, spirit will take more from you. If you're feeling unworthy, that's not true either. Life is not a race. It's not a competition. Um, it is about the apple tree, remember? And the apple tree is the Gemini Cancer Cusper. Seven years is mentioned um, where you mustn't give up on a dream. Um, you are reaping what you sowed with the decisions that you made up to now. So... It doesn't matter what you did in the past. What matters is that you do the right thing now. Um, so stop competing with others and just stick to your own No, But it is a lot about finances and career this by the look of it. You need to do things um, in a serious manner. Power away what no longer serves you. Um, get rid of the dead wood. A loss of belief in yourself and others, or even religion. And then we've got the shit starers back. So those that stare the shit posh should be made to lick the stick. They want to win at all costs. They don't care how they do it. Um, they will try to destroy you spiritually, mentally and physically. Uh, what they don't realise is everyone will regret this and no one will win. There is unconditional love here, either in living or the spirit. Cancer energy, the home and family life. Someone in charge of their emotions, clear thinking, beautiful energy. Uh, for some, it's an older water sign male. Usually it's a cancer, which is 21st of June to 21st of July. But um, it's about emotions. And um, a bond that cannot be broken. Again, we've got the cancer in the shell. Two cups that are full. A mutual admiration. 
So the crab and the beaver, some of these beaver are in a way to build something. Um, we've got somebody who's very prickly there, likes to cause arguments. And then we have the nine of pentacles, a codependent situation, one in which you are there because you have to be, not because you want to be. Could be a work situation or a relationship. The foundations are um, destroyed. There is an issue here with stability and finances. Ten years. Those born in the year of the rabbit could be important. And you're running out of options. You've got to narrow down your options and choose. Because something is dead, done, dusted. You, have, you should be getting over it now. Um, it's an end to pain, physical and emotional. Um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Ten weeks. Um, and I'm going to bring out the big guns, which some of you don't like because you don't really understand them, but um, I think they bring more to the story than when well, it's full moon energy and new moon energy. So let's see what they have to say. So this looks more like finances and career stability within the family unit, maybe, or at work and career. We've got Leah. You will come out stronger on the other side. This is about power struggles. Um, with a Leah or just taming the beast within and without yourself. It's about the heart and back. It's about having courage and patience to see this through to the end. The number 11, massively important. 11, 11 gateway. And we are in Leo now. We've just entered it. And the full moon card, well done, spirit. So the sun's in Leo. The moon's in probably in Aquarius now, but this is the Capricorn moon. Um, we've got the number 54, massively important. The full moon is about endings. Uh, it is about seeing things clearly, even though you're in the dark. Yeah, home and family life, cancer, massively important. It's been mentioned three times now. It's about maybe you feel like you're retreating into your shell. Um, there is no fair winds right now as far as this goes. Um, so the number 29 is negative energy it's um letting someone emotionally damage you we have scorpio something has to end so something new can begin um the number 33 a master number it's about abundance it's about shared resources and the reproductive organs you are uh, coming out of your cocoon and uh, forcing your way out so that your wings are strong enough to fly and we have Taurus energy again. It is Venus, abundance. There's born in the year of the boar, um, the number 49. The kill, somebody's killing your pig. Um, the prodigal returns, maybe. But there is a separation here. Somebody in separation. Um, Gemini energy, so Gemini Cancer Cuspet seems very relevant. It's a number 28, so we've got 28th and 29th um, seem to be important. It's children, it's um, schools, it's siblings, hands, arms, shoulders. It's your choice which way you go. Spirit can't do anything for you until you've made that decision. The name Jack and Jill, obviously, could be important. And um, twins. Then we have the year of the rabbit, which was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Was it yes, last year or year before? 41, negative. The first of the month, so 1st of August maybe, a um, uh, very hard period of time with a lack of abundance, but it is coming, it's, but it's all about your choices and what you choose to do. So spirit can't make your mind up for you, but just remember that it's not a competition. You're going to have to cut back on certain things so that you can um, reap a better uh, reward later on. 
So we've got the number 10 again in reverse. Hellebore. Hellebores do not show their face. They're always hanging down. They're such a beautiful flower, but uh, you don't see the beauty of them because they're always hung down. So number 10. We keep getting that number 10, don't we? Could be 10 Downing Street. Um, so, it's about Venus, which we've got there. Um, it's about Saturn, which is uh, also Taurus energy. And Mars, so arguments. But it's the water element. So, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Emotions. So hellebore is a potent poison, warning us of the nature of burning the mouth when consumed and burning the skin with its sap when touched. Well, I never knew that. This quality indicates its power as a powerful and caustic force to set boundaries and offer protection. So that's what she's doing. Setting boundaries and offering protection with her sword. This quality indicates its power as a powerful caustic force. Blah, blah. In an incense, it is used to consecrate Saturn talismans and for calling the powers of Mars, so giving you the impetus to take action. In folk magic, hellebore would be used ritually to protect cattle, so again Taurus, from the malign influences of witches. Despite this, hellebore is also a plant associated with witchcraft and witch goddess Hecate, so at a crossroads, and Seridan, the pot starer. So, the root is most often used in necromancy to gain knowledge uh, or inspiration from the unseen forces of the dark. So, up to no good, that seven of swords. So, be careful, because you reap what you sow, especially if you're messing with the dark arts. These qualities are lent to it by its less obvious feature. Its blossoms in the wintertime are under the snow, giving it the name Christmas Rose. So the name Rose could be important in Christmas time. Its growing nature is often the edge or within forests, though it can also take full light. Another variety, Haliborus orientalis, blooms closer to Easter and its name it's named the Lantern of Easter Rose. Despite Hellebore being in the buttercup and not the rose family, the ground-up root of Hellebore is sprinkled in a circle around oneself for invisibility. So someone wants to go back in the shell to be not seen or somebody's up to no good and it's unseen. The deeper mystery of Hellebore uh, is in the darkness, the subtle and the stillness of silence. Its healing magic is for those who feel like they are unseen or invisible or unloved and underappreciated. It aids any solidarity, solitary sorry, healing process where we have to be alone in our pain and grief, where we must find the love of the divine. So there's your pain and grief, but there is the love of the divine. Unconditional love. Uh, of the goddess on our own, Hellebore can help us feel protected during our healing, but also assist us in dealing with the feelings of isolation through our pain. We can awaken to a deeper level of mystical awareness. So, you're not wanting to be alone and feeling alone in the darkness. Rather than choosing to be alone, we feel the choice was made for us by others or circumstances beyond our control. So look to the support of the ancestors and the dark goddess for comfort and wisdom at this time. Maybe you just need to be silent and still to hear the voice of spirit. So, retreating into your shell to heal and grieve. And then come out the other side stronger than ever before. It's about balance. And I believe 
that is Jera. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look. Yep, so Jerry's back. Jera is a joy to men, and the gods make the earth to bring forth shining fruits for rich and poor alike. So this rune was also called Jer by the Anglo-Saxons of Northumbria and England. Uh, the letters J and Y and Rosemary as a plant or a name. Jera is connected with the early cycles of nature, particularly with the harvest. So like I said, you reap what you sow um, and the celebrations that go with it. It's also symbolised by the strength. There we are, strength of the venerable oak, which is Taurus. And we're not feeling that strength because we've lost friends, uh, marriages ended, things like that. Um, the herb rosemary is the rune of joy, of plenty, of rich blessings. Jerry's association with celebration connected with Yule time, so a Christmas celebration. Um, Yule is the 20th of December to the 23rd. <clears throat> expresses the warmth and happiness of the time. In this sense, Jerry is simply assigned to the winter solstice when the sun is at its weakest, yet begins to gain strength once more. Jera is the twelfth rune and therefore halfway point of the Elder Falkirk. The year also has twelve months, and in ancient times the day was an addition held to consist of twelve hours, so noon and at midnight could be important. The symbolism of Jera relates to the tragic tale of Balder and Hordor, two of the sons of Odin, Wednesday. Baldur was known as the beautiful, shone like the sun. Poor Hordor, on the other hand, was blind and so quiet that he was often ignored. So it's the quiet one that's being ignored that we have to look after. Baldur was so beloved of both gods and humans that his mother spent a long time extracting a promise from every living thing that they would not harm him. So she coddled him. However, she ignored the mistletoe. So, uh, which is a parasite really on your apple tree because it was so puny that she could not imagine it could do any hurt to her beloved son. So sons could be important and uh, the addictions of a son. There is a, uh, should not consider the malice of the deceitful God who would be under your back, uh, Loki. So Loki was... The, uh, the friend that you would not like your kids to have. He incites others to throw weapons at Balder, all of which bounced off him. Then he suggested that other objects, such as pots and pans, but no harm came to Balder. Only bland Hodor held back because he could not see his brother. But while Loki persuaded him to join the game, so you might be encouraged to be nasty to someone or someone's being nasty to your children at school but they're not uh, it's not with ill intention except for the one uh, he offered to guide his hand but to provide him with unlikely weapons a dart made from the puny mistletoe so something that you thought means nothing is actually a big thing this small dart hit its mark and Baldur fell down dead Slain by his brother's hand. So, uh, when man kills man. But all was not lost, for Baldur eventually conquered death. So, we overcome whatever this death is, physical or emotional. Um, and was later resurrected, like the sun on midwinter's day. Jera is connected with endings and new beginnings and Scorpio their energy. And that's what the full moon is about, an ending. Its presence in the reading predicts a time when your present trials will end and you can make a fresh optimistic start. The rune's association with the harvest also associates Jera with the concept of reaping the rewards of your past. Well done, spirit. Its appearance signifies a completion 
of some project which be, will be celebrated with joy and relief. Jer assures that your optimism will not be misplaced, so stay positive, and that personal success is very likely. A new home or the signing of contracts is also suggested by the room. It may be that you will have to employ the services of a professional person, such as a lawyer, what did I say? Um, or an accountant, to put the full final seal on some kind of advantageous agreement. So if you're in a partnership of any kind, make sure that you've got an accountant that can um, audit the books because this could be actual theft and dishonesty. Uh, Jarrah's connection with the number 12 may suggest a period of 12 months to a year is indicated. This does not necessarily mean that you will have to wait a year for the good times to come, just that the abundant good luck of this rune may last a considerable period, such as 12 months. After all, it may take some time and effort to reach the, success, reach the successful conclusion you desire. Like the preceding runes, Gemma has no inverted venus. So there's no negativity there, except what you put into it. And finally, we have beauty. The outer world is a reflection of your inner. So if you're forever moaning about how bad it is, the worse it will get. So focus on the beauty within yourself, your good qualities, your kindness, your gifts and talents. Remember that whatever you give your intention to will increase and grow. Everyone, every single person has some beauty in their soul. So seek it out in others and remind them of their qualities. You will illuminate them. So you get more bees with honey than with vinegar. Surround yourself with things and people with a beautiful vibration. For we are all influenced by that which is around us. As you tune more and more into the incredible wonder of yourself, others and the planet, your resonance becomes that of beauty. Others will perceive that radiance of your soul and be touched by it. So give yourself unconditional love as well. Stop beating yourself up for the past. Recognise the beauty and that in others too. Thanks for listening. I'm really grateful for you all being there. Hope you enjoyed this. Speak soon.